So, um, so let me start the, the third session, the final one in the English session, uh, which is about the, so my title is, uh, so uh, my name is Tatsu from Database Center for Life Science, and uh, my talk is a little bit more easier uh, than the previous one, I think so. And, uh, the, the topic of my talk is about the runtime matrix of the workloads. So the title is the workloads that run everywhere and where to run them. So um, as Marco has already introduced, the, so the, well, the CWL is the standard for describing the workloads and uh, which enables sharing workloads uh, among the different platforms and the power tools are packaged in the containers, so workloads are, are technically now portable. So tools are packaged in the containers, and the workloads are written in the common workflow language, which uh, is executed in, the, in any environment, uh, basically. So we can say goodbye to git clone, make, make a store, but it, it doesn't work, so stack overflow, blah, blah, blah. So it, it takes a long time to, you know, it, install the tools and they learn the workload. So um, now we can do whatever you want, whatever we want. So um, that means, so we can run the workloads everywhere, means we have options. So where should I run my workflow? So we have laptop, uh, and then we have probably desktop computer. And we may have shared computing cluster, which is a little bit bigger than your desktop. And we also have a very nice option, which is uh, cloud platforms like, uh, like Amazon or Google or Microsoft or any other uh, industrial um, clouds. Or we also have a, a cloud, academic cloud, which is provided by the universities. And the cloud platforms uh, usually have uh, Another options for the for the size or the specifications of the of the computing instance. Uh, sometimes so th these are the the instance types from the Amazon Web Service, and uh, you know you can use a general instance or maybe oops sorry um, and the computing optimized uh, mm -hmm. instance, and then we have the memory optimized, storage optimized. So uh, we have many options. So sorry, we, I need to. Okay. Let me just. I just I just move the cursor so so that uh, the screensaver is not coming. Okay. Um. So uh, to to optimize uh, the the environment to run the lonely work for you should know about your workloads. So to run the workloads at the best performance, you should know about the runtime metrics like a processing time, so how, how long does it take to run the whole workloads, or uh, CPU memory usage and the storage and block I.O., network I.O., and you should know um, about the, the performance with relation to the inputs. So let's say, uh, so we have this small size data and we have a bigger size of data and uh, maybe the workloads will have different processing time with each input. And uh, we may have uh, the different parameters for, let's say, um, in the parallel execution arguments, or probably uh, we have a different um, input arguments. And then we also... Sorry. I need to... I think it's okay. Okay, and yes. So, so these, so, so we have portable workloads, but we need to know uh, which is the best uh, environment to run the workload. So I have developed the suitable L metrics, which is a system to capture runtime metrics uh, via the Docker API, and also capturing the workload metadata from the suitable L file. And you can analyze the metric, runtime metrics of the workload 
and it's so uh, it's open source and you can get from the github url from here or just google cwl dash metrics so um, this is a logo uh, maybe you have uh, that's the that's a parody logo <laughs> and uh, it, it is very easy to use so you need to wrap your tools in Docker containers. So uh, CWL also supports the the tool execution uh, without the containers, but uh, this tool need, needs you to wrap your tools in the Docker containers. And uh, you need to write a CWL of your workload and uh, install CWL metrics by just uh, hitting the curl command. So this will fetch the, the script and uh, run on the bash and uh, it automatically fetch all the resources you need and will start automatically as a daemon process. And after that, you need to uh, execute the, the reference implementation of the CWL called the CWL tool to run your workload. And we, we have uh, some specified options for the CWL2, but it's basically just, just run the CWL2. So it automatically uh, collects the runtime metrics in the database. Then after the execution of the workloads, um, you, you can use the CWL dash metrics fetch command to get the summarized runtime metrics. So um, it works like this. So it, it's a, just a basic uh, timeline. So you just invoke the, the CWO to, to run your workload. So CWO2 will launch the, the containers. So step one, step two, step three, and after that, it finished the workload and the output a log file. And the CWL metrics here will collect the runtime metrics like a CPU or memory usage uh, of each step here and also capture the, the log file and then it will uh, accumulate in the database and then after after the execution you can use the command to fetch the data from CWL metrics in the JSON format or TSV format and inside the CWL metrics here uh, there are a bunch of uh, containers are running on your computer so so this is the tool container which is uh, part of your workload, but we have a uh, telegraph container which is uh, collecting the, the runtime metrics from the doc, Docker daemon and it sends the runtime metrics data to the Elasticsearch container. And uh, we have another uh, CWL metrics daemon which is collecting the CWL to log file into the Elasticsearch. And the Elasticsearch will have uh, runtime metrics data and workload metadata and the metrics uh, summarize command will just fetch the data from the Elasticsearch to you. And uh, so here is the list of the, the, the runtime metrics uh, captured by the CWL metrics, uh, which is it's, it's just a basic um, runtime metrics like uh, memory usage and on the total memory usage, cache or something. And then we're also collecting the, the CPU usage and the network and block higher so basically it is enough to analyze your tools and workloads and also yeah it's it's collecting the docker demo information like a, so if you um so you, you you can change the the number of the cpu or the amount of the memory assigned to docker so you you can um see the the settings of the docker demo view and it's basically using the, the telegraph docker input and so you can use uh, see the full list here and I, I, I'm going to upload the, the slides later and uh, as I said uh, you, you just can run the CWL metrics fetch to uh, capture the, the metrics data from the Elasticsearch the output format will be uh, JSON or TSV you can specify and uh, also, you can use the Kibana, which is the, the visualize um, platform for the Elasticsearch, but uh, it just uh, show you the raw data captured in every 60 seconds. And also, you can write your script to uh, hit the Elasticsearch API to uh, do your own analysis. So, um, 
So by using the suitable elementals, we developed and uh, we have performed the, the, the workload comparison using the only C workloads. And I already uploaded the, the manuscript to the bioarchive, and so you can search CWL dash metrics on bioarchive, and you can read everything. And uh, we use the seven more clothes, and which is uh, published in the this re GitHub repository. And uh, we um, we downloaded the nine samples of the different number of leads and the links from the public uh, NGS data uh, repository. And then we use the six different AWS instances of the M5, C5, R5, which is the general and computing optimized and the memory optimized. And we use the um, four CPU cores and eight CPU cores. Is that correct? No, eight and 16 maybe. But so we did analysis. So I'm sorry that the, the calcs is a little small, but. Um, so it's basically so this is the the comparison of the different samples uh, processed by the, the same workload has a two string tie and so this is the single end version and then this is the paired end version and so this is uh, it's a little bit small but uh, this is this three samples from the left is 50 base pair long and one gigaries five gigaries 10 gigaries and this is the, the 75 base pair rate length, and this is the uh, 100 base pair rate length. So um, basically, it's uh, and the, the y axis means the processing time. So it means basically uh, the processing time of this workload is very correlated to the, the size of uh, the data and also the 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 read length of the RNA sequence data. And here uh, we have another comparison, and which is the, the same sample to different workloads. So we have high set two cufflinks, high set two string tie, Callisto, Salmon, star cufflinks, star string tie, and top part two cufflinks. So um, as you may know, uh, top part two is already deprecated one. But still, many people love to <laughs> use that. So this is the the kind of the you know um, very um, interesting figure for them. <laughs> but the top part two is just you know uh, takes a long time to finish. So it's like uh, so the list of the workloads are finishing less than one thousand seconds. But uh, it's like. Uh, it's like 5,000 seconds, so it's like five times slower. And uh, the, this one, the right one, uh, shows that the, the memory, uh, total amount of the memory usage. So uh, as you may know, uh, the star aligner is using a lot of memory for the bigger genome index. So it's, uh, it's actually um, really normal and uh, we can understand the difference of the, the algorithm and uh, so these uh, four um, workloads have a different uh, usage of the memory here so Caristo and Salmon is uh, using a less amount of the memory so um, this kind of the, the analysis you can do with the with the suitable L matrix can tell you about the, the cost of running workloads. So this is the table uh, which is uh, comparing the high set two cufflinks and the top of two cufflinks workloads and which you can calculate the, the cost per workload run. And you can see a uh, difference. So lower rows uh, for top of two is just expensive than high set two because it's low. So yeah, you, you can do this kind of the comparison analysis uh, by using your workload if you could package your workload in CWL. So basically I'm talking about the uh, incentive to package your tools and the workloads in CWL. So um, my future plan about the CWL metrics is, uh, is this is the big deal, but uh, we haven't done yet. But we will do the resource prediction 
using the stored uh, workflow route data. And we also want to improve the implementation of the city of oil metrics uh, with the less dependencies and uh, it, hopefully we, we can make it to um, work with the other containers like uh, Singularity or something because it's now totally depending on the, the Docker data. And we also have to uh, integrate the set of our metrics with the provenance information, which is uh, about the, um, the log data and the tracking information of the workflow executions. So uh, hopefully we can put the metrics information in the, the provenance subject, which is um, from the, the side project of the CWL, which is called the CWL prof, is the provenance in, uh, providing the, the tracking information, provenance information of the CWL workflow executions. So, um, what I want to say here is just share your workflow in CWL and we can help you to understand your workflows and where to run your workflows. Thank you very much. So now it's two. To you, Koto. De. Hi, eh, Arigato Gozai Mashta. De, eh, to Nijikara Nijin Nijupum.